Hey peoples, this is another movie review of Ford vs Ferrari. As always, I want to say thank you for listening, that really means a lot to me, and on to the review. So Ford vs Ferrari is about the Ford Motor Car Company, and at this time they're kind of going through a slump. They have boring cars that no one cares about and no one talks about. So in order to inject some energy into the company, they decide to build a car that can beat the Ferrari in a 24 hour race that is held in France. And in order to do that, they get in contact with Carol Shelby and Ken Miles, and we're along for the ride to watch these two men work together to try to beat the Ferrari in this race. And that's the movie. So first and foremost, before anything else, this movie is so much fun, and it has to do with the car driving. The car driving in this movie is so amazing. I was trying to figure out why the car driving in this movie seems so exhilarating because of course every couple of years we are smashed in the face with the biggest car franchise that we have which is of course the Fast and Furious franchise. But the driving in this movie feels real. Everyone feels like they're actually driving and you feel like you're in the passenger seat with them. Now this is no shade towards the Fast and Furious franchise, it's just that no one in that franchise as of recently feels like they're actually driving the car. The cars don't even feel real and it feels like there's no danger whatsoever in what they're doing. The cars in Ford vs Ferrari have weight to them. I'm sure it's a combination of the camera angles, the way they shoot it from the outside and the inside, the fact that you can keep track of the characters when they're driving and where they are. I'm sure the car crashes are also a factor because you can have car crashes in a movie and it looked like a bunch of mess, but they made sure you understood what actually happened during that crash. And the only few times where I didn't understand why a crash happened, you were basically seeing it from the inside of the car. So if you were the driver, you wouldn't understand what happened either. And you're just trying to avoid hitting other cars and continue on with the race. But if they didn't nail anything else in this movie, which they do they kill it at the actual driving scenes you feel the energy you feel like you're actually driving and the best part is that there weren't a hundred cuts of them gear shifting to make it seem more actiony than it actually was but enough gushing about the car driving it's time to gush about the acting this acting is superb now before i actually watched the movie i had heard things about matt damon and christian bale both running for supporting actor and as i was watching the movie my first thought was i don't understand what people are talking about this is insane christian bale is obviously the front runner this man is dominating this screen but that changed as the movie went on because I was noticing what Matt Damon was actually doing. The reason Christian Bale feels more engaging is because his character is just more colorful. Matt Damon is more of a smooth, slick talking guy. But once you get into the groove of what Matt Damon is actually doing, you do begin to love his acting as well in this movie. And side note, I really liked his accent. It's that country twang, kind of like he's singing. It put me in the mind of Randy Travis, not that it sound that great, but I did like it. Also, we have to mention that John Bernthal is in this movie. And when I say he's in this movie, I mean he's throughout the movie from beginning to end. And boy, was that refreshing. For those who don't know the name of John Bernthal, the biggest character you've recently seen him as is the Punisher. But this man loves to cameo in a bunch of stuff. And it's aggravating because he's a good actor. He's in the Peanut Butter Falcon for about five minutes. He's in Baby Driver for about five minutes. He's in Wind River for about five minutes. He just loves popping up and giving you great performances and then disappearing. So it was so great to see him in a full movie for once. But anyway, every single person does a great job acting in this film. But now we gotta get to the story. The story of this movie is fine, I guess. I mean, it's a simple true story. You can guess what the story beats are going to be throughout the movie. That doesn't make it a bad thing. It's just that it is what it is. It's interesting enough and it does keep you engaged, but personally for me, after seeing so many movies based off of true stories and then later on finding out what the actual story was, it makes me question what was real in this movie. Because of course you wonder, did these people actually act this way? Did these things actually happen in the movie? Where they happened and when they happened? Is that character even based off a real person or were they just placed in the movie? And I knew nothing about the story and I don't know the real story, I haven't researched it yet, but I'm sure car history enthusiasts will pick this thing apart and be like oh that's correct or that's wrong or that was made up who in the world is that person i'm sure that will happen and then after maybe a couple of days when the movie's released we'll get a bunch of articles talking about the true story of ford versus ferrari and i'll be like oh okay so here's what really happened if we got into a serious conversation about this i will say that those things do bother me a lot because after you look into the actual history of movies like rush or straight out of compton or the hugh jackman musical with bt barnum i think that was his name when I found out the certain events that actually happened in real life, it made me kind of annoyed at the movie because you're telling a false narrative. And if this is supposed to be based off a true story, how much true are we actually getting? And it becomes a bigger discussion whether it's okay to change key moments of information in an actual story. 
But anyway, one more thing about the story I wanted to talk about is that I wish we would have gotten more time with Shelby and seen his transition. So when the movie starts out, he's a driver, but then he has a physical problem that prevents him from driving and he gets into designing. The thing is they do a time jump between him learning he can't drive anymore to apparently designing cars. And I'm sure it wasn't an easy transition. Let's imagine you're doing something right now that you love to do. Let's say it's draw and all of a sudden your sight's going away or it's dancing and all of a sudden you can't walk anymore. Those are humongous life changes. And I think the movie missed out on possible dramatic scenes where we could have watched Matt Damon's character go through the struggle of realizing that he can't be a driver anymore. That would have been really great to see. But overall, like I said, the story is fine. It's pretty simple. You can pretty much guess what's going to happen. And sometimes the movie tips his hat and hints at what's going to happen. Like, oh, here's some foreshadowing. This could possibly happen. And oh, look, it happened. I won't go into details, but that part was kind of annoying. But overall, like I said, it's fine. The only other problem with the movie is the language issue. There are scenes where there's another language spoken and they don't give us subtitles all the time. And that was kind of disappointing. I would have really liked to know what those people were saying. If I'm not mistaken, there are moments in the film where they do show subtitles, but for a bulk of it, they do not during those scenes where someone is speaking another language. But that's a minor gripe. Overall, this is a very entertaining movie. One of the best car movies I've seen in it's been a long time. It's a great car movie and it's amazing acting and you will have a lot of fun with this film. So of course, I absolutely suggest going to watch this film. And that's all peoples. As always, thank you for listening. That really means a lot to me. Please do me a favor and comment down below whether you've seen this or not. If you wanna see it, tell me why. If you did see it, tell me what you like, what you didn't like. If you are a car history buff and you know that some things aren't true, let me know if that bothers you when you watch this movie. That'll be very interesting. But as always, please continue to have a great day. God bless, I'll talk to you tomorrow.